Hey guys, CB Super. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make this really neat audio visualizer. It doesn't take too many nodes and it's really simple to do, but in order to do it the way that I'm going to be doing it, you're gonna need the Reactor plugin from the We Suck Less site. And I've actually already done a video on where you can download this and how to install it. And I'm gonna go ahead and link to that in the description and up in the cards. So I'm not gonna go over that too much right now. I'm gonna be using the Suck Less audio modifier actually show how to find that inside of that other video so go check that out first so with that being said i'm going to go ahead and jump right into fusion and go ahead and start building out this audio visualizer now it's probably not a true audio visualizer in that i don't know how accurate the wavelengths are it's kind of a kind of just a, like a really cool fake okay here we are inside of fusion i'm just going to bring this planet footage in and drop it over here on the left side I'm just gonna plug it right into my media out. Now everything that I build is just gonna be somewhere in between. So there's a couple different ways to make the dashed line look. You can either use a fast noise, which is the way that I'm gonna show you how to use it first, or you can also use maybe something like a TV node or anything that makes horizontal or vertical lines that you can use as an alpha to mask out different parts of the line. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and prep this fast noise so it looks like lines. You know, double click on the fast noise and I'm just going to drop the detail down a little bit. Jump over to the color tab, change the type from two color over to gradient, uni over to linear, and I'm just going to bring these two lines a little bit closer together. Now in the black, I'm going to drop the alpha all the way down. I'm going to bring these start and end points in a bit and you don't need to make them perfectly uh, horizontal here. You can actually come over to here and just type in 0.5, tab, tab, 0.5, enter. Click off somewhere and you'll notice that now it's a pretty good solid straight line. Now I may need to bring these a little bit closer because I have a little too much softness here in this line. I want this to be a nice defined line. So the closer I can get them, the better. And now in order to make it into a bunch of lines, I'm actually going to come down to the repeat section and just click on repeat. And now you see I have a bunch of white lines, which is exactly what I want. And if I want to make these thinner, all I gotta do is come over to the second Y here on the end section, and I can just move it up or down and make the lines thicker or thinner. And I want these lines to be real thin because I want it to look kind of digital. All right, so that's probably good right there. So the neat thing about this fast noise is you can actually mask out parts of the fast noise. Say if I was to bring in a circle, you'll notice that it masks only this part of a perfect circle. So say if I even if I wanted it the same size as this planet, I could do that. Um, we're not going to be using an ellipse. In order to do this effect, we're actually just going to use a polyline. But I actually want to see what this looks like on top of and I'm just gonna merge this, drop this blend down just a little bit so I can see it a little bit better. And I can tell already that I'm probably gonna need to thin these out even more, just so they're real thin. And I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. And since I'm gonna be using this planet background for my template, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab this polygon node tool while clicked on the fast noise. I'm gonna start on the planet and I'm just gonna bring it up close to the top of the screen. It doesn't have to be at the very top. Once I've made my two lines, that's about all I'm gonna need. I'm gonna come over here to the modify only or shift M. And now I can kind of move this a little bit just to make sure that it's properly straight. Now I don't want it to be a solid line. I actually want to click off the solid and just give it a little bit of border width. And this is kind of where you can kind of play with it and you can make it whatever you want it to look like. Personally, I don't want this rounded top. So I'm just gonna click on this one right here where it's flat. It's gonna look a little bit better to me. And I'm just gonna make this a little thinner. Kind of click off and see what it looks like. Okay, that's exactly what I was looking for. Now we can come back over to the merge and we can turn this blend all the way back up so it's nice and white. And that's kind of the basis for this particular audio visualizer. Now you can, you can make this however you want. And you'll see that when we get to the polygon side, we're actually gonna be animating this length here. You'll notice whenever I move the length in and out, it goes up and down. Just because I'm using the audio modifier on this to make it more automatic doesn't mean that you absolutely have to have the audio modifier. You could just manually animate this length and you would get a very similar effect. All right, so now that we've set up our polygon and our fast noise, I'm just gonna move these up just a little bit and I'm gonna add a duplicate node. So I'm shift space, type in duplicate, and I want this top one, not the duplicate 3D, I want the duplicate 
bring this in and for copies I find that right around 80 to 100 copies work so I'm just gonna go with 80 copies for now and over here on angle I'm gonna go ahead and double click on this and since I want this to go all the way around this planet I'm gonna type in 360 or 360 degrees I'm gonna put in the division sign and I'm also gonna put 80 I want this to divide 360 degrees up 80 times because I want each one to be individually perfectly spaced from each other now again if I was to do this Say I drop this down to 40, you'll notice that it covers about half of it. So I would want to come back into the angle, double click, and I could type in 360 divided by 40, and now it's going to perfectly space them out. If you didn't already know that, that's just a quick tip to like get evenly spaced things around a circular object. And so here's another thing. If I come over to this polygon, let's say I add a transform in the center of this polygon. Well, one thing you'll notice is that because I was clicked on the polygon it automatically decided it was going to mask this transform I don't necessarily want to mask this transform what I want to do is I actually want to hold down the right mouse button bring it back in as an input and now I can use this transform node to transform where this mask is so if I wanted to bring it inward I could and you'll notice that it's going to bring all of the duplicate nodes inward you can do a lot of cool things with the duplicate node it's really, really a powerful node. It's also very computer intensive. It will slow you down. Your fan will run like my fan is running right now. You might not be able to hear it with the audio denoiser on. I can tell you that it definitely will run your computer a little bit hot. You can decide where you want it exactly. You can always mask this out after the fact. I can see already that mine's just a little bit off. I'll be able to fix that really easy by actually adding in another transform node after the duplicate because now from here all I got to do is just move it over a little bit rather than try to move this polygon over what that would do is since I've already duplicated it so you notice if I come over to this transform here and I try to move this over to the right it's going to start to skew these in a way that you don't really want it to and I don't know actually maybe you want to do that that looks kind of cool too but I'm not going to do that for now so for what I'm doing it's just a little easier to transform it after the fact and if you can move it around a little bit if you need to uh, place it a little bit better job of placement all right so here we are we've went ahead and we made the basis of this audio visualizer I'm actually going to go back to having 80 because I think 80 looks a little bit better and I'm going to come over to angle and I'm going to type in 360 divided by 80 again all right so it looks pretty cool if I want to come into this fast noise if I want to make these a little thinner I can if I want to make them a little thicker I can do that um, you have options here don't feel like just because once you do something you're completely locked into it so like maybe I like that look um, I can do that. It, it has kind of a digital look. All right, so we'll just leave it there for now. And I'm going to come over to this transform node just because it's going to be a little bit computationally heavy if I uh, have the media in the background. And I'm going to drop this down. And I want to show you how this works. Over here in the polygon node, if I adjust the length, you'll see that the length comes inward. Vice versa, if I go out, it goes all the way out. In order to add this modifier, I want to use the the suck less audio modifier so I'm just gonna right click come with modify with and yours should be right here hopefully it's the audio wave click on that you notice that it's it turns red over here on your keyframe and everything over here on the left or on the node panel turns red that's because we have to come into the modifiers and we have to tell it where to get the sample now the waveform is gonna be wherever it is on your computer now it only works with certain types of files so make sure you watch that other video or you're already familiar with how to use this. I know that it took me a little while to figure out that wasn't working on other even WAV files. It only works on a very specific type of WAV file and that'll all be down there in the description. All right, so I'm just gonna go to where my file is and I'm gonna come over here to, I'm gonna use unsigned median. I'm gonna need to adjust this offset somewhat. All right, so in the in this time offset, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna type in 0.4. So once you adjust the time offset inside the duplicate node, you're gonna start getting your waveform look. Depending on what your offset is set to, so let me come back over to this polygon node and let me go ahead and adjust in the modifiers, double click on the wave, come over here to the modifiers, right around, I find right around 0.2 probably works for what I'm doing right here. You'll notice if I offset it too much, it's just going to raise even higher. 
it takes a good while for this actually to initiate. You'll notice that there's a lot of colors that are flashing down here. That means that each one of these nodes is trying to process whatever I've changed. And one thing that I've noticed is that this process takes a good while to render. In fact, it took me probably almost two hours to render it the first time I did it for the demo. So I'm not going to be rendering it or caching it in this video. You're going to have to do that on your own and have fun with that. But that's pretty much it. So just make sure that your amplitude offset isn't too high. Uh, what worked for me in this specific scenario was right around 0.2. I thought that gave me uh, a really good look. Here it is, that's pretty much it. The only thing I did different is right after the transform node, you can add either a background to color it or you can use something like my CB Alpha Glow and you can give it some glow. You can also just colorize it. Um, you can use this however you want. You can uh, overlay it on top of other backgrounds. Let me drop this strong glow down quite a bit. You're definitely gonna need to play around with a couple different parameters and the parameters you're gonna wanna play around with to get your individual effect is probably gonna be uh, this time offset. I found that 0.4 was a really good place to start, going a little bit less and a little bit more, but not going too crazy with it. And then also on the fast noise, playing around with the individual thickness of these lines. So like I said, it doesn't have to be a fast noise. It could also be a TV node. So let me go ahead and just delete this fast noise real quick and I'll bring in a TV node and I'll show you how to do this. I'm just going to bring this in as a mask and then I'm gonna drop this background into this TV node. Now, one thing you always have to do, TV node is also a noise generator. So what I usually do is I'll get rid of the power for the noise, uh, leave this bar strength alone, come back over into this TV and then you play around with the, with the actual scan lines. So the more scan lines you give it, um, the more spaced out they're going to be. Um, if you bring it a little closer, they're going to be a little closer. Uh, probably not a black background. I'd probably bring this, make it white. And so now you're going to get a very similar type of uh, effect. So if you come back in over to this polygon, you can see the polygon is just in the lower portion. But if you um, move along the line, you'll see that it does, in fact, animate. And so sometimes you can get some uh, different looks just by changing this up a little bit. So. All right, so that's how you can use either the TV node. The only thing that it's duplicating is this one part. So of course, as it you know still drives it around 360 degrees, um, you're gonna get your neat little digital line look. And of course, you can uh, you can add power to it. You can do whatever you want. I mean, you can you can even bring it back in here and you can remask this into here. So if you wanted to add power, you can add the power. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna add the power only to the actual uh, white part, the color. So I don't know if you can tell, but it's definitely different. It's uh, It looks a little bit more deteriorated. So play around with it. Uh, you can even increase the size, make it look real rough. Uh, let me show you how you can do it without the audio modifier. If we come over into this polygon, instead of using the actual audio modifier, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this audio. And instead, I'm gonna replace it with a modify to a perturb, because uh, I kind of like the way that perturb moves around. And then come back in over to the modifiers. So now if we look at the line, you can see that it's going up and down. It's uh, It doesn't, doesn't go up and down fast enough to where it would be kind of like music. But what you can do is you can turn the strength down a little bit, turn up the speed a little more, maybe give it some wobble. And now it's kind of looking like more like music. And you can, you can adjust the random seed. Um, you can adjust the value to, to make it go even higher to use the, the full line. All right, and there you go. It's uh, it's animating, although very slow, but that's pretty much how you could do it if you didn't want to use the audio modifier for whatever reason. Um, you could probably fake this pretty well to the point where nobody would really be able to tell that it's not matching up with your music just by using a, that type of modifier. And of course, again, it's still gonna take you a little while to render this out, so. Um, when you do end up merging it back on, just make sure if you want, you can come over here to the merge. And if it's perfectly matched up, it's probably gonna be fine, but you can always come over here to the apply mode and you could just not dissolve. You can come over and you can just screen it on just to make sure that it's nice and bright. And now you have like a really cool looking, you know, effect that didn't really require too much math or too much work. All right, and that's pretty much it. So if you guys like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.